Hello everybody, welcome to another video. My name is Rodgon and today we're going to do a video that you guys requested again. Uh, we just did how to draw derpy animals number one. So we're going to go into a second part. We're going to do some more derpy animals. It seems like you guys liked it, so I think I'm going to make this a consistent thing. Just keep on doing it once in a while so you guys get to see some new ways of how I draw animals. It seems like you guys like that, so we're going to go about it. Today, we are going to draw four animals. Number one, we're going to draw an echidna. Yeah, an echidna. We're going to draw an owl. And then we're going to go into a shark. And then we're going to draw probably a koala or a naked mole rat. I don't know. We'll see. Depends on, you know, how we proceed. Maybe we can draw both. But let's get to it. All right. So the first things first, we are going to open up our trusty program. In this case, I, as most videos that I do, I am going to be using Manga Studio. The reason I like Manga Studio over any other program is because it's super simple to use, very intuitive, doesn't take up too much processing power, and I prefer it over Photoshop to be able to draw. Another good one would be Sketchbook Pro. So that's another one that you guys can probably look into. Sketchbook Pro is pretty intuitive, but Manga Studio or Clip Studio Paint Pro, as they call it now, uh, is probably your best bet. So let's see. Let's start with... We're going to start with an owl. So... I have an image of an owl that I want to use. Let's see if I can get it into the program. There you go. So in this case, he just looks all mean and grumpy. So, but he's seems like the cutest little owl ever. So we're going to make this into a little, you know, cute, derpy version of itself. So the first thing that we got to do whenever we're designing anything is kind of break down kind of like what the shapes are within the you know within the actual animal in this case we're just going to draw over the actual animal and figure out exactly the shapes that we're going to be playing with and these are just basic shapes you don't have to worry about like you know identifying every single aspect of it in this case we're doing the head we're doing the wing that seems to be wrapping around and it seems to be wrapping around a lot and then the body right uh, in this case you can't really see any other details so if you broke them down it would be something similar to this it would be super simple super quick <coughs> I am sorry if I cough again um, it's just lingering from before so having have had this information and like we already know the basic shape so we can go in and start playing around with that so we're gonna have the head is like an oval the body is relatively big compared to the rest of the body and we're gonna play with proportions a little bit more so we can make them look a little bit funnier then the wing kinda overlaps and comes this way And then his face. Let's see, let's turn off that. And it's all like little feathers that keep on going this way. He has like a split right here. Like where I like to see like the eyebrow line right here. And that kind of connects right here. You can see a clear distinction. Uh, then the eyes are relatively big, but let's draw the beak first. The beak is little tiny beak. And I've realized that with owls, you have to make sure that you draw the little hairs that are like coming in so you can get the actual look that they have. They kind of look a little bit evil sometimes. Okay, so we have that, then Gotta start figuring out how we want the eyes. 
they have to be relatively big and then they have little feathery things that kind of mask their eyes right and, uh, essentially we have that and it has little spots and we can do those with the actual color we're gonna add a little bit of color to these unlike the other ones that we did okay it has this this tucked in the feathers in the arm seem to be going in this direction and they seem to be sticking out a little bit more and then the last thing is the little feathers underneath just give a little indication remember this is just our basic template and we're gonna draw over this with some cleaner lines so as long as we get the general aspect of this it seems like the body kind of connects right here so we want to make sure I get that in there uh, draw something that he's standing on in case I don't want to drop you know that I just want to draw some branches He's going to be a, a puffy, little, angry, angry bird. Yeah, a little indication of the little spots that we're going to be drawing in. Okay. It has a little bit of like darker lines underneath the eyes. Right. I think we got a general idea of what the little owl is supposed to look like. So let's go ahead and just draw him out. So if you're using a digital program, you can just make a new layer, make these underground layers a little bit more transparent and then just play around with the actual shape. Well, what happened there? Give me a second. I have an old Cintiq, so sometimes I have to restart it because it just likes to, you know, not recognize my pen. All right. What the hell? Um, weird. Okay, there we go. Then we got it back. Cool. All right, so now we have our layer where it's just empty. We're gonna go, we're gonna get just a normal, a normal pen. We're gonna make the intensity of this a little bit smaller. What the hell is going on? Um, weird. One more time. Let's try this again. There you go. Perfect. All right. Technical issues aside, let's get started. So now we have our layer. And now we're just going to use this as a basic template. And we're just going to start drawing our little owl. When it comes down to feathers, it's very similar to what you would do with hair. Okay. There you, go. you have to make sure that it looks like feathers. So in this case, the owl's feathers are kind of feathery. Oh, feathers are feathery, huh? Uh, it kind of looks like fur to a certain extent. So if you look at here, it has little tiny ruffles that just look like hair. So whenever you're drawing it, you have to give that effect. And the way that you do it is just by doing little tiny ziggies, sag lines, for the lack of a better term. And playing with textures and playing with line work like that, uh, it comes with time. 
It comes with actually just playing around with it more and more and more. So the more that you like play around with textures when it comes down to actually drawing, it's going to help you by practicing how other artists actually render out those things. And that's the same like tip that I give anybody that wants to get better quickly. Like if you wanna be able to be at the same level as everybody else, all your people that you like, you know, look up to and stuff, we all did the same thing. We all used, you know, other people that we looked up to and use them as reference to be able to get our skills up to a certain you know point don't be afraid of doing it uh, just make sure that if you're actually using somebody's work as reference don't claim it as your own you know just make sure to give the proper credit to the people that helped you out and you never know maybe they'll even reach out to you and you know you'll get to actually talk to the people that you look up to. I know that whenever anybody reaches out to me, uh, I try my hardest to, you know, give them some pointers and stuff. Uh, I know a lot of you guys contact me on Instagram, so I do my best to be able to reach out to you guys as well. And right here, I'm literally just going through the little details that I thought that were really cool and just adding the little tiny details that I know that should be there. In this case, the little hairs around the beak add a lot to it. And the little dark part right there just kind of ties up the whole beak. This gives it a little bit of depth. And then this kind of just feathers out. Uh, I might bring the eyes a little bit lower. Okay, perfect. And he has kind of like these eyebrow things that connect to the feathery parts by the beak. So we got to make sure to give them those. Okay. Don't be afraid to correct anything that doesn't look right. Uh, more feathery parts right here. And also, make sure that you're not trying to add every single ounce of detail. Uh, in this case, we're just drawing animals like in a silly way. So I might change the eyes a little bit, and you'll see how easy it is to make an animal look derpy. But uh, if you start trying to draw every single detail, first of all, you're going to be like there forever. And I don't know if you guys know this, but I, I have like horrible attention span. So I would just, you know, die if I had to take that long drawing something. Like I have horrible, horrible tendencies. Like I think it came from being a caricature artist for so long, but I absolutely cannot like draw the same thing over like you know like hours at a time mostly because it just drives me insane if I have to look at the same artwork for like three four hours I'll just either start working on a different project just to get it out of my system or I'll just go nuts like I'll start overthinking everything that I'm doing within that project so yeah that's kinda how I see things I know some people work for days at a time days on like you know their projects and stuff and oof, like more power to you like honestly like you guys are superheroes because I can't do that shit. alright so we have for the most part, all the little details. So in order to make them not just necessarily an evil owl, if you want to just make them derpy looking, all you have to do is just change the eyes to make them look really silly. You know, that's one way to go about it. And 
You just want to have them like look cool. They could be something like this, right? Kind of like we had it in the sketch, but let's see. Uh, it's okay. We'll do the other ones a little bit more derpy. We'll just keep this one kind of mean because I like that image because it looked super angry. So let's keep it like that. Ah. So recently I changed all the buttons to my Cintiq because I did a, the last video that I did was a review of a, like a graphics tablet. So I had to remove all the drivers and it's been a pain in the butt, like to make sure you remember like where I had all my buttons. It's so annoying. <laughs> okay. Let's draw a tree branch. Like I said before, this is literally just a template. So you can change anything as you see fit. Like, don't be afraid to change things as you go about inking. In this case, I'm inking the drawing that I did before, but don't be afraid to change it. Like, in this case, you can't really see his feet. So I'm going to change this so it goes a little bit higher. And we're going to give them, you know, slip claws to go in this way and then going this way. Just because you can't see them doesn't mean you shouldn't try to draw them. Uh, it just gives it a little bit more depth and it makes it look cooler. All right. So we're going to... Okay. So we're going to give it a little bit of color. going to remove... Yeah, let's remove the sketch. Uh, we're going to grab, just color pick the color that it is in the actual picture. And let's just give it some color real fast. Going to make the brush really big so we can just cover a large area. And this is the beauty of using reference. Uh, when you use reference, you already know what colors you're going to be using. So you don't have to worry too much about all the detail. So in this case, I'm literally just color picking and just painting what I see. And it's not cheating. It's not, you know, it's not anything bad. Like so many people, like for some reason, think that drawing with reference is cheating and it's not like it really isn't like it's insane to me that so many people think that uh, some of the best comic book artists draw with reference all the time uh, Alex Ross is a huge one you know like it's every single comic book artist that has ever made it really big probably uses reference on a very constant basis so don't be afraid to draw with it it's literally just taking inspiration from life and you don't have to worry so much about it now eventually you'll be able to draw all this from memory which is pretty cool you know in that sense but you don't have to worry about not being able to do it from memory from the beginning it's it's crazy like everybody starts in a certain way so don't be afraid to draw from reference guys which is Essentially, what I'm just trying to instill on you guys. Uh, let's see. It's mostly white, so let's fill this in. Now I'm trying to leave it a little bit loose. You know, a little bit cross hatchy, and it gives you like that effect of the other colors from the feathers filling in as well. So you don't have to worry about every single spot, every single detail. It's a quick indication of how the texture is supposed to look like will suffice. Okay. These are a little bit bigger dots. Let's 
just make the brush bigger so it's easier. And these go all the way around. And they eventually start getting more prevalent to the point where you start seeing mostly this color by the time you get to the bottom. Okay. <laughs> there you go. And as always, I like to end everything with a layer on top and just have some highlights. Even though it doesn't have them on here, I'm just still going to give them to them because it just makes it look cooler. Highlights are the best part of a drawing. I absolutely love adding them to everything. Little highlights here and there because, you know, it has lustrous, you know, feathers. And then you can go into the color layer and just erase. Mm, have normal eraser and then just... The reason I'm not using like a selection tool is because the like the little ziggy zag lines that I used for the feathers have open open areas so it would just select everything and then it would be pointless because there's no reason to, to select everything it's, it's just gonna erase everything that you put in there there you go Last thing you can do, just grab like a very subtle color and you can just fill it in. Oh, why is it not drawing? Oh, it's because they have the eraser. You can just make a background. And it can just be like random shapes, really. Just anything to break just the normal, just plain color. I like doing stuff like this all the time. Just delete the overlapping parts. I could, should probably color the tree trunk too, but in this case, I, I want to move on to the next animal. So, ta da! Hey, eraser. There you go. All right, so. We have our first animal, and it's a really cute little owl. So what we're going to do is we're going to merge all those layers together and go on to the next animal. Uh, let's merge it together with that one. Okay, so we have our our sketch. Uh, we'll just leave it like that. Next animal. The next animal we're going to do is an echidna. Uh, the echidna I don't know if anybody here is familiar with the echidnas, but they're incredibly awesome animals. They look really cool. Uh, I think it's, a, it's the same type of animals from the platypus family, where they lay eggs even though they're mammals. I can be completely mistaken, so if I am, please make sure to let me know in the comments. But it's just like this really cute little anteater combined with a you know, it looks like a porcupine. I don't even know if those are spines or not, but okay, cool. So we're gonna get started the same exact way that we did with the other one. You know, we got the basic shapes for the owl. Let's get rid of those. We're gonna just break this guy down as well. Choose a smaller brush so we can get the shapes right. He has a relatively small head. I don't even know it's that big. It's like this big. Has a little nose, and then the rest is his body. So his body is like a big jelly bean, right? And then his he has really big paws. Like he has really thick legs. It's very hairy, and he has like all of these little things. 
So if we break these down, there you go. This is the basic shape for an echidna. He has a little tiny eye. Let's make sure to put that in there. So that's the basic shape for an echidna. It's, yeah, that's pretty much it. So seeing that basic shape, we're going to leave it there for a second. And we are, oh, let's try a different approach, right? We're going to take that, that one basic shape we did. We're going to enlarge it. And we're going to use that as a basic template as we just add, add to it as we go along. OK? Uh, so in the other one, we went in and actually drew a little bit of detail you know, before we went into this. We're going to do a little bit different approach so as you can see a different way of going about it. In this case, we're going to add the detail as we, as we design it. And this is a process that I would do if I'm a little bit more familiar with what I'm drawing. And I actually feel confident enough to actually start adding things just on a super rough layout like this. So in this case, let's start, let's start with the face first. I can see that the top of the nostrils, they point up, and he has a little mouth. And as long as I stay within the template that I drew for myself, I should come up with something that looks very similar. Let's zoom in a little bit. These shortcuts are killing me, man. Like, I need to remember what I had on my ass. So these little spikes are going to be really fun to draw. Uh, mostly because it's just the same concept as the feathers. You're just going to have to go in and just draw oh, not every individual hair, but it's going to definitely be drawing a lot of like Z lines. And what I mean by Z line is this, but you're doing it in a broken way. So it looks like individual spikes and you don't have to draw every single one. But in this guy's case, we're going to have to draw a considerable amount because, oh my God, <laughs> and his whole body is like that. But they get seems to be more dense as they go farther into his body. So we're just going to start layering it like this. Remember, we're simplifying at the same time as adding detail. So you don't have to draw everything. We just have to make sure that the final drawing gives you a good indication of all the detail that's going on. In this case, he has little uh, colors that like identify the tip of the actual spike. So we are going to be able to play with that with the color. That's good enough for there. His legs are nice and hairy as well. And he has really big paws, like really big paws, like really long nails. And the paw is considerably wide. And the hair comes in like here. Just make sure you see how that lap, like shapes overlap as well when you're actually using reference. That is the most helpful part of actually having reference. Uh, we can't really see the other foot, but I want to have an indication of it there. I'm going to fill it in a little bit. Just like in any comic book, if you see something that's colored in darker within the shape, it just makes it look like it's farther back. So you don't have to worry about you know, filling in too much detail from that one section. 
just a good old comic book trick. This back foot seems like it's very similar. It just has really long nails. So I'm gonna approach it the same way. And it's probably hairy as well. So I'm gonna do the little ziggy zags. Okay. I'm gonna give it some ground to stand on as well. Boom, 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 boom. Always make sure to see how you can give your drawings a little more depth. Backgrounds obviously help. And we're gonna do the same thing with the back foot since we can't really see it in here. We're just gonna give a little indication that it's gonna be in this way. Now, when it comes down to the face, the face is normally my favorite part of anything that I draw because that's when you get to set the personality for the whole thing. In this case, we already made one that's angry, so let's go with a different approach for this one. So we're going to make it like just stupidly happy, which means we might have to change the shape of the mouth as well. But in this case, we're just going to draw a circle eye. I'm going to give them an, a super simple eye. Uh, I like giving my animals eyebrows. So we're going to just make some floating eyebrows for them. We're going to have the second eye right there. Because it's a cartoon, so you can do whatever you want. And I'm going to give them an open mouth. I don't know exactly how much their mouths open, but you got to consider it like this. If there was like this part of the mouth, right? If it opened up, where would it go? It would go about this to this area right here. It's all about perspective, guys. Like, all this, like, you know, being able to know how things go into the distance, how it go into different bodies and stuff, it's all perspective. Like, just seeing things as shapes and then just breaking it down in the way that you're going to be able to, to make it work. Huh. I keep on getting text, hold on. All right, uh, so we have that. We're gonna give them a, uh, a tongue. The tongue would come in from here and would go back into the actual, into the mouth. I don't know if they have teeth, but I'm gonna give them some teeth anyways. So now, There you go. So now we have this. And it seems like they have a clear distinction where the mouth starts. And just for exaggerating purposes, we're going to make the nose even, even more like a funnel. There you go. So I have that. Let's give him some drool. The drool would be dripping into the actual tree bark. And there you go. So now let's give this guy a little bit of color. And we're going to do the same process. First, we're going to get rid of that. The sketch. We're going to make a layer underneath. Grab the basic color that this little guy is. It's about that. Make a big brush. color everything about them, everything, there you go. Uh, then identify different colors that they have, for example, ah, there you go. These guys are more like a grayish blue, okay. Okay. 
the color picker tool is your best friend when it comes down to stuff like this. Um, let's see. His actual feet are a little bit of a grayish tone, but it's only the very tip of it because the rest of it is covered with its fur. So do the little ziggy, ziggy lines on it as well. It just makes it look like there's a clear indication where the claw starts and where the fur starts. Okay. Uh, I like making my eyes white. The tongue. I'm pretty sure they have a black tongue, but since I am not completely certain about that, we're just going to color it pink. Okay. Gonna move up. We're going to color pick that color. Okay. Teeth are white. The drool would be white and blue. We'll add a little bit of detail later. And for the most part, this guy, oh, his nose, the tip of his nose is a little darker. So, have that. And you can always blend it together. You know, so it, it gives it a nice little effect. So now the little spikes, right? So the spikes are like that. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller. A little bit bigger than that. There you go. Go back to our thing. And in this case, it's, well, it's going to be a little tricky. We're going to select the color of the spike. We're going to, this is what happens when you don't set up your, uh, your, you know, shortcuts to the right keys. I'm pressing random stuff and I'm just not working at max efficiency. So in this case, I'm just going to go to all the indicated ones that I already drew. And I'm just going to add little spikes. And make sure that the little spikes are going in the direction that they're going in the actual drawing. And as long as you do that, it will give you a very similar effect. Even if you don't draw every single one. You guys would be amazed at the noises that I do whenever I'm actually drawing stuff. You guys would make fun of me. In my head, there's like always sounds that go associated with whatever I'm drawing. He has a little bit going on right here, not too much, and there you go. Now we just go ahead and erase the color, extra color that we have. We'll recolor the teeth because it's just so much easier than having to go in and go around it. Anything that you erase can be touched up again. And these are just literally super quick comps of stuff that you can do. It's, I'm not doing these to have like a refined drawing at the end. It would just be, this would be something that I use as composition so I know how to break down the animal so I can just do it over and over again without having to look at reference anymore. I am building my mental library right now because I've never drawn an echidna. Something I love about Manga Studio Color Picker is the button in the actual Wacom. 
it's like on the on the pen or a tablet if you use a tablet it's just the button in here so you just go boop, select put it in there yeah. there you go let's make this darker darker give it a little shadow like that perfect all right so we have this we're gonna give it a little bit of a background shape as well like we did with the other one it really can be anything guys like it doesn't have to be like a specific shape it doesn't have to be like a forest or anything just something to break up the entire shape like this section there you go I'll leave it like that but you don't want it also to over overpower your design so you can always just make this a little bit lighter and there you go that's an echidna now let's merge all these layers together and move on to the next animal there you go and that's a sketch right <laughs> that's a sketch okay so next animal we have on our list uh, let's merge these two okay the next animal that we have is going to be Hmm. Let's go with a shark. We already drew a lot of cute, you know, cuddly animals. So we're going to draw a shark for the next one. And sharks are really fun. Like sharks are just super simple shapes. You just have to know like how they are shaped in order to play with the like, actual character. So for a shark, it's literally you have to think about it as a cylinder, right? So, if you think about it as a cylinder, boop, boop, it's broken down into a couple different shapes. Oh my god. This is driving me insane. Uh, undo, 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 undo. Okay, there you go. So, ooh, the head is more like a triangle, like a cone, with a little bit of, a, of an indication of an like a mouth in there then the body is just like a cylinder and then it's another little cylinder at the back like a traffic cone and then it's a triangle for this for this and for these right so we're gonna do it even a little bit different for this one <coughs> I'm gonna merge those two together. We're gonna make this smaller. Right? I'm gonna leave it right there. And we're gonna take those same concepts, but we're gonna exaggerate it a lot. So we're gonna. So we have the front. You're gonna have that be the front, the front triangle right there. Then we're gonna have the tapering. That the back. This is the middle section, the back section. We're going to have the triangle in the back. Boom, 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 boom. Then the fin goes towards the back end of the top part, but we're going to stylize it a little bit. We're going to add a fin. We're going to add the other fin. Okay. And then the mouth. the basic shape we're gonna change it a little bit so we can have a little bit more fun with it and there's that and the eyes are normally like really close to the front so that's normally what a shark looks like right we have like this super quick indication of it so we're going to get rid of this until we need it for color. And we're going to just play around a little bit with this. I want to give it a super big, wide, like, happy mouth. So we're going to take this shape and we're just going to draw around it. But I want it to be so big that his teeth are going to be sticking out for the front. There you go. 
And then we're going to draw some teeth. I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom. Remember that there's two sides of the mouth. I'm going to give it a tongue, which means that you can't see the lines up in the back. Uh, this would be the back part of the mouth because you have to close it off so it actually has some depth. The cheek, in this case, they don't have cheeks, but I like to play with flexibility of the skin. So I give them slightly human traits sometimes in order to just make them more cartoony. Then let's make sure. Okay, the gills are a little bit before the fin. So we're going to go on to it like that. And then we can just go in and finalize it with some overlapping shapes. What I mean by overlapping shape is stuff like this, like the nose. We could just have it be a rectangle, but if we overlap it a little bit right here, just a very slight indication, it just makes the drawing have a lot more depth. And you can do that in pretty much the rest of the actual drawing. Like right here, I'm going to get another overlapping shape into another so it looks like it's going into the distance. Like right here, I make this line overlap this line so it looks like it's going farther in. Here with the lip as well, they don't have lips, obviously, but just giving it a slight indication like that gives it a little bit more depth. And those little tiny details are what make the difference between an okay cartoon and a really good cartoon. We're also going to change the eye. I want to make them mad. Do I want to make them mad? Or do I want to make them like super silly? Like, <laughs> I think I like that more. So I'm gonna, it is derpy animals after all, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Overlapping shapes again. Uh, I know that they don't have like the same type of eyelids and stuff like that, but like I said, giving sometimes humanistic traits, like humanized traits to the animals you're drawing makes them look a little bit cooler. Uh, am I missing something else? Yes, I am missing a couple fins in the back. And let's give a quick indication of where the color would be. So this goes around the mouth, goes down here to the belly, and then it goes all the way and tapers right there. All right, so with this, we have our rough. So now we get to do the same thing, reduce the opacity of it, go into our final lines. We can zoom in and then just Make sure that you have your brush size properly. Oh my God. There you go. Uh, smaller brush size for more precision. Even though we don't have to be 100% perfect, we still want it to have like, let's make this a little cooler. We're just gonna make it like this. Okay, there you go. When it comes down to actually designing with a tablet or when you're drawing on an actual computer screen like a Cintiq, uh, at first it's going to be incredibly annoying because you won't be able to get the straight lines that, you, you know, that you're used to when you're drawing with just a pencil and a pen. It's going to be a learning curve. And that learning curve is so annoying to get past. But if you do, if you tough it out and you actually work through it, it'll make a huge difference because you'll be able to ink things so quickly. 
and I'll have to make a whole other video on how do I go about inking. Uh, right now, I'm just using a normal brush and then just kind of going at it. But for the most part, I normally use the vector, the vector inking uh, tools in Manga Studio because it just gives you so much flexibility and it makes your lines look amazing. So I'll have to make a whole other video just for that. But for now, I'm just using the normal, I think it's the G-Pen, which is the basic pen tool in Manga Studio. I don't have to, I don't change anything on it except the size for my brushes. Obviously, the more teeth, the better. If you draw them uneven, more power to you because they have so many teeth. And symmetry is completely overrated. We're going to do the same effect that we did in the other one. If it's farther in the background, we're going to color it in with black so it looks like it's farther into the distance. I'm going to do the same thing with that. And it's going to go into the mouth. When you're drawing cartoons, having actual, like, let's say contrast between really heavy blacks and heavy lights makes a big difference. So, like, lighting plays a huge role when it comes down to anything that has to do with illustration. A lot of the times you can get away with a single point perspective and like just basic lighting, but when you want to actually go, you know, beyond what you normally do and you want to get a little bit more complicated, you have to make sure that you realize light sources, colors, and like contrasts because it just makes a huge difference. <laughs> All right, there you go. Let's give them some gums. <laughs> I like them. And oh, we're missing the tail. Okay. And we're going to go about the same way, and we're just going to add some color. And we're going to base it off the colors that we have here. So our biggest color that we have in there. I have my pan and my like undo button in the same button. It's driving me insane. OK, we're going to choose a color that's not too dark, not too light. That should work perfectly fine. Make a new layer. Make a huge brush. I'm going to color over the whole thing. We're going to have everything nicely saturated. There you go. OK, the next color that we have to choose is a white. And we're going to use the little lines that we set up before. Make the brush a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit smaller than that. And we are going to kind of fill in the color where it's supposed to be. It's not completely even. Okay. Make sure to fix little errors that you might have made or little spots that you missed. Okay. Uh, next thing that we notice is that there's like a big fat highlight on the top. So we might want to put a little indication of that on the top as well. 
That's a little bit too light. I'm going to go with this color. And lighting, uh, reference for lighting is probably the most important thing over anything because it's so hard. It's, in, I don't know if it's just hard for me, you know, but it's really hard in general to be able to understand how light hits things properly without it looking fake. And in this case, I think it helps a lot to be able to have the photo reference and just kind of play around with it like that. Uh, I'm going to blend it in a little bit. Just so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. And we're going to go into the details inside the mouth. So we're going to go with a slightly off-white, like a yellowish for the teeth. We're going to color the gums layer. It's easier to saturate the areas with the most detail and then go in and change the little like overlapping things that you need to fix later because it just makes it so much quicker. And you can always use like lasso selection tools and stuff like that to do this. It makes it a lot faster, but I want to walk you guys through the basic processes and how you would be able to do it without having to know all those details. That's why I normally take, you know, a little longer using all the basic stuff. That way you guys don't require knowing all the details and all the shortcuts in order to be able to use them. Uh, for example, in this one, this should be a little bit darker because it's a little bit in the back and not necessarily the same color as everything else. Uh, has a little bit of like a spot right here, which I kind of like. So I'm just going to add that in there. And now we, like this one is a closed shape. So I should be able to select the line work. Which one's the line work? That one's the line work. Mm -hmm. I'm going to select the line work, then we can go back to our layer with color and just clear out all the stuff that we don't need. And then we have our shark. And we forgot to give it a little bit of background, so we're just going to take some of that blue that we see there and just kind of give it like some squiggles. If you wanted to get fancy, you can take this, uh, lock the transparency that makes it so you can like only color in the area that you have. And, you know, I'm just going to give it like a simple gradient. A little bit more. There you go. There you go. And if you want to go even further, you can just make bubbles. Boop, boop, boop. But that would be how I would draw check. Uh, so, how long is the video so far? The video is about 30 minutes long. I think we are going to stop it right here. And I am going to... If you guys actually like these videos and see me like break down what we did, I'll, I'll just make a Derpy Animals number 3 at some point or another. You know? But for now, I think these guys should be good enough <laughs> all right we have that so what did we do today let's recap so we did a little you know a little owl a little angry owl and we played around a little bit with feathers and how to give things an indication of texture the next one with a, an echidna and same thing, same concept, only a different animal, this time fur instead of feathers. 
and then we have an aquatic animal in the shape of a shark and how to break down an animal and then change it to make it fit whatever you need to fit so with that said and done guys thank you guys so much for watching i hope that well, little technical issues that happen you know don't really affect you know the viewing and the enjoyment of the video but you know if you guys see anything that you guys would like to see different anything that you guys would want to learn leave it in the comment section i actually listen and read every single comment you guys send so and i take everything into consideration i want to make sure that i make content that you know you guys like content that's teaching you guys new things and not just repetitive stuff over and over but in this case you guys a lot of you asked for uh, version number two of derpy animals and how to draw animals and stuff so i wanted to give that to you guys for this thursday so anyways like and subscribe buttons are down there make sure to click them if you guys enjoy what i do and i'll see you guys in the next one have a wonderful night Hopefully these animals were derpy enough for you guys to have a good laugh and learn a little bit more of how I go about drawing animals. There's videos on the left and the right if you guys want to learn some more about what I do. Thank you guys again. I'll catch you guys in the next one.